I'm Marianne Lewis. I'm the Dean at Cass Business School, City University of London. In my presentation today, I was I sought to leverage my research, which is around organizational paradoxes for the past 25 years, and really look at the tensions that we face in our business schools, that we try to develop in the leaders that are our MBA students, and to work through those. So we looked through them. We looked at um, a host of tensions, and not just any tensions. I talked about the differences between trade-offs, that either-or decision that we make all the time, but more importantly, these complex paradoxes that are really interwoven, that are persistent, and that we can't just make a decision. We need to work through them on an ongoing basis, like today, tomorrow, global, local efficiency and responsibility. A host of those kinds of issues. It's a great question. What, one of the challenges that we have in business schools is that we need to focus on our current MBAs, our local MBAs, as well as those around the world. We also have to think about our MBAs and what they need today, as well as what they're going to need in 10 and even 20 years. So it's that combination that's always pushing us to look at a host of different angles and really to provide some depth as well as breadth in what we do. Not easy decisions. You know, I think one of the things that we have to build into our MBA is the ability to know that we can't predict. And in fact, if we can give our students anything, it will be the ability to learn fast, learn collaboratively, and learn for the rest of their lives. I mean, if you even think about the technology that we'll teach today, it's going to be obsolete in a couple of years. So what we have to do is teach them how do you learn new technology? How do you ask critical questions? We heard one of, one of the sessions today there are very dark sides to technologies as well. So if we help students ask the right questions, continue to push, not get complacent, even if what we teach them today changes tomorrow, we prepare them. We prepare them for that. We let them be agile. We empower them. You know, it, it, it's true. There are certain people who are going to gravitate more to this approach of continuous learning, continue to push the boundaries, the entrepreneurs, those probably more in marketing, in design, uh, maybe more of a challenge in our financial services areas. But at the same time, those are going to be the areas that need it most. So if we get one of the goals that we have at CAS, oops, that worked. One of the goals that we have in CAS is to help build the discipline into our entrepreneurs and our marketers and that side so that they're using analytics, they're evidence based, they're managing risk, things that will go against their nature, just at the same time as we're talking to our finance students, our accounting, our actual, we even have actuarial scientists and say, how are you going to be bold? How are you going to be innovative and creative? If we can help them learn the other side of the coin, both groups, we have a stronger cohort. Oh, I think generalist specialist is a classic tension in MBAs. Personally, I do believe in the both and. So we're going to be looking more at how do we build strong generalist foundations and choices of depth so that you can build that breadth. You have to be able to look and think and talk across disciplines and at the same time save enough space in these programs so that you can build some depth into an area of specialization. That let, helps these MBAs have more to show and to sell when they get it out into the marketplace, but also to be more effective team players and leaders. So they need both. I think there's always so much to learn from LEGO. I think both from their past and their current, maybe their future, I would hope. I mean, LEGO's an interesting company because it's had significant downs as well as upside. So if we look into the past, we can see why did they get into the vicious spirals that led them to some very dangerous depths? And more importantly, how did they get out? How did they push it? Um, one of the examples that I use today and that we're using at CAS is how do you leverage improvisation? How do you build simple frameworks with clear rules that help you actually empower you to create, to be innovative? A paradox mindset, maybe the easiest way to describe it is to first explain what it isn't. If we contrast a paradox mindset to a traditional approach, a tradi traditional approach is based on either or thinking, formal logic. It's weigh the pros and cons and pick the solution you think is, if not right, best. A paradox mindset says, I'm going to accept that some tensions, there is no solution. We will need both. We will need to be both local and global. We will need to be socially responsible and financially viable. We'll need both. A paradox mindset means accepting that, 
embracing that tension and actually working through it to find both and solutions. How do we make sure that we actually excel at both sides simultaneously and find an overarching vision that holds them together? I think increasingly business schools are looking at their, their curriculum and specific courses and electives and saying, how do we provide MBAs as many tools for their toolbox as possible? There are more schools than just CAS thinking about a paradox mindset, critical thinking, very creative approaches that complement what we're also doing in analytics and more traditional business decision making.